Welcome home. It's Irish Family History with curious news and notes. Celebrating our fourth year of this podcast at the Irish Roots Cafe, where every day's a holiday and there's always room for one more. One of six broadcast series from the head school at irishroots.com. I'm Michael Laughlin, your host, publisher of rare Irish books and uh, information on every county in Ireland since 1978. Be sure to read our blog, complete with links to click on from this podcast, and search our master index and books for free. Molly, wet the tea, Katie, bar the door, Sweeney, clear that floor, and bring out the Irish dancers. It's time we get this show on the road. Well, it's show number 145, and you know what? We're actually in our fifth year of broadcasting this uh, show. I just remembered that. I've been saying the fourth year, but we've actually been around five. And among today's topics at the head school, the family of the day is O'Laughlin. I've had a lot of people asking about that. And since I'm on O'Laughlin, I thought it would be only fair that we did a little bit on it now. I've overlooked my own family, so I'll start with a little bit of it today. I'm, I think I'm going to put a little bit more on my web pages about the families I know, too. Uh, but that's coming up. Uh, number two, we're going to talk about Irish families in China and China Irish. Number three, hey, some more eagles are back on the coast of Ireland. And number four, our one-minute podcast is on the fall of the bards in Ireland. Number five, Clare is the county of the month. Six, Conway family sets a record with six and searching for Naylan, Trailer, Nolan, and O'Malley. Well, let's see. Notes for the week. What's happening today at the Irish Roots Cafe? Well, we finished up the launch of our Hedgerow uh, workshops right here, and uh, that was a lot of fun. Drove on up to Kansas City and uh, launched it right from there at the Irish Museum. And uh, we got some few bugs worked out, and we know how the thing's going to flow now. So that was real interesting, and we had a lot of fun and a lot of smart genealogists there. And, of course, Renata was there from the Irish Language podcast that we have, uh, helping some folks with some beginning Irish. I think she had the Our Father in Irish for them. And Peter was there, who's also on the Hedgerow History podcast. And he was uh, doing a little bit on the history of... Uh, Ireland through songs. Some of the songs were familiar. Some of the songs are not so well known. So he had some fun with that. And uh, we're just getting that all laid out. And that's a really interesting program. And uh, we can come out there and do it for you if you contact us in advance. And uh, gosh, we've already got another one just on the music on the 27th of February at that, uh, that Irish Museum in Kansas City. Uh, number two, We've shipped more of our books all the way out there to Gould Genealogy in Australia, uh, or should I say down Australia way. Uh, many thanks to all of you folks in that area and for supporting our, our Irish Family Publications and the Irish Families Project. And a special thanks to Alona or Olana, and uh, their address is Gould, G-O-U-L-D dot com dot A-U. Now it's time for the one-minute podcast coming up to you, and uh, we've got a different one picked out for you today. From the Hedgerow History Podcast, here's our conversation on the bards in Ireland. Well, that, that's exactly right. And you know, these old professional schools, they lasted till about 1641 in the coming of the uh, penal days in Ireland. And they were really closed down in the 17th century when the great patrons of the schools, uh, really the great families uh, of Ireland, like the O'Neills up there in the north, all the great uh, tribal leaders, they became homeless or they were exiled or they became part of the wild geese that had to leave the country uh, Perhaps one day to return, but perhaps not. But those, they were the great uh, uh, people who pledged their monies, funds, and places to help the schools. And when they left, it destroyed the entire system. And that system was closer to a university-type system than uh, the hedge schools will end up being. But as these bardic schools uh, ended, the hedge schools would start to begin. And we'll talk about that in our next segment. Uh, 
And you know, some of those teachers and some of those students might have migrated to those first early head schools as a way to keep the tradition of learning alive. I'm just sure of that. And uh, of course, if we take a look at uh, these Bardic schools, they started out as pagan and then became uh, Christian. Uh, and of course, they were also introduced into Christianity from the Roman traders and uh, 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 folks that uh, came over from uh, Wales and, of course, Patrick himself. Now, the Bardic schools were secular. They taught uh, in Irish, as just as the head schools did at first. They both taught in Irish. That was a point of pride. It was the only way you'd think of doing it. And the focus was on Irish language, Irish history, and the Brian Law does it for our excerpt on uh, uh, today's podcast. That's from the uh, Irish Hedgerow History Podcast. And we talk more about the bards, the fall of the bards, and the rise of the hedge schools. And, of course, the hedge school is what we've started up here at uh, uh, Irish Families at the Irish Roots Cafe and at irishroots.com. And uh, it's really been a lot of fun, and you can learn a lot as well as having a lot of fun with song or recitation or family history or just about anything you've got a fancy for. Well, now it's time for the book of the day, and we're actually going to pick County Clare as the county for the day. And uh, our books on County Clare, we've got several, plus I'll mention a few others. There's the Families of County Clare, Ireland. That's on our webpage. There's a link on the blog. And in that book, I took a little excerpt and put it on the blog, and that talks about the Viking raids that were above and below and in, on the Shannon and Limerick uh, surrounding uh, County Clare. And it also talks about, of course, Thoman, which was the old geographical region that County Clare was uh, contained in. And uh, we talk a little bit about that, about surrounding uh, uh, counties and some things that happened in history, and especially on the movement of the families in history and the geography about how Claire's bordered by the Atlantic Ocean. I think everybody knows that that's taken a look. And uh, uh, Shannon River there, of course, the Shannon's part of Claire, that's for sure, in history and legend. And uh, we also talk about the thousands who fleed to County Clare uh, because in the 17th century, they were forced into Clare because they said there wasn't enough wood enough to hang a man, not water enough to brown, drown him, or dirt enough to bury him. That gives you an idea of the territory where uh, where the O'Laughlins came from, too, because they were lords of the Burren, and I was excited about that. And then I found out that Burren was just like lord of the Great Rock or the Great Rock Pile, uh, depending on who you were. Uh, some of the invaders didn't realize the natural beauty of our country <clears throat> and the lands we were living in. We've also got a book, uh, County Clare Genealogy and Family History Notes. I've got a link to that on the blog. Uh, there's also a book called The War in Clare, and that mentions a few people. Uh, hey, they've even got one of my ancestors in there. And there's The Old History of Clare by White, which is a, a, an old uh, history of County Clare that mentions a lot of incidents and people, as does The History of County Clare by Frost. And the first time I walked into Dublin Castle back there in the late 70s, early 80s, I asked if there was anything that would talk about the O'Laughlins, and the librarian there turned around and said, Oh, yes, here, the history of Clare by Frost, quite a chilling subject. And that was my first introduction to uh, perhaps uh, British humor. I'm not sure. But we've also got uh, more about the families, Clare, families of County Clare in a book called The, uh, the Houses of Clare, and that was by Weir the houses of Clare, and that traces the history of several different houses and the families that lived in them, and that's just a beginning. But now it's time we moved on to the Magnificent Seven. Oh, and just trying to remember yet, we've got an uh, enhanced version of this podcast one version is strictly the audio where you hear my voice. The second version is what they call a photo and link enhanced podcast where you can see photos that I put up uh, uh, as you listen to the podcast and you can actually clink, click on links that I put on those photos and go to places that uh, might be of interest. And uh, we've also got a podcast, a blog reader, and a blog. So don't forget our blog too. And it's all, the whole, the whole shoot and match is at irishroots.com. 
Let's take a look. It's time to raise our eyes skyward and see how we can help folks today. Number one, welcome Diana Fife, a full sponsor member searching for Neeland. Her grandmother Agnes was born in 1884. Her mother was Mary. Welcome new member William Trainer of Sugar City, Colorado, searching for Trainer, no matter how you spell it. Welcome new member Richard Conley of Waterloo, Iowa. Your book uh, uh, of Irish families has shipped as well. Ruth B. Sanderson of Shawnee, Kansas. Your Fermanagh and County Louth genealogy book has shipped. Sandra Crowley of Barrie, Ontario, Canada. Your County Armagh book has shipped. Uh, Daniel O'Lowry of Christianburg, Virginia. Your book of Irish families, Great and Small, has shipped. And Larry Phillip of Nina, Wisconsin. Welcome as a new member. And Larry's looking for Charles Nolan, who came to Rockford, Illinois in 1854 from County Carlow, and Austin and Annie O'Malley, who lived uh, in Rockford, uh, Byron, and Pecatonia, Illinois. Boy, thank you to each and one of you, every one of you that helped us with our books or with our membership. Without you, we would not be possible. Well, now it's time for the Irish family name of the day, and we went ahead and picked O'Loughlin, uh, dis- despite the fact I might be accused of favoritism or nepotism here, for my name would be O'Loughlin. Uh, but of course, the name, the more formal spelling of the name in O'Loughlin, it's O L O U G H L I N. And of course, somewhere along the line, my grandfather or his grandfather changed it to O L A U G H L I N. But it's the same family, and I found that out real quick when I went to Ireland and saw that. Everybody spelled it O-L-O. You might have had a similar experience uh, with all the changing in the Irish names. And today's uh, family history is in honor of member James W. O'Loughlin. And, of course, there's many different spellings of the name. Uh, the last two letters can be I-N or E-N. Uh, uh, you, you just you never know what you're going to run into. And, of course, uh, it's got that O before the name, so it's an O name, but that O can be dropped. And in rare instances, you might find that uh, uh, the O'Loughlin could be MacLachlan or O'Loughlin. It just depends on what happened in history, and that takes some research. And it's in variant spelling groups number 1124 and 1674 in the Master Guide to Irish Family Names, the spelling of Irish Family Names. And the O'Loughlins were traditionally known as Lords of the Burren, and that's the first thing they told me when I called over the phone to stay at the B&B my first trip to Ireland. They said, well, the O'Loughlins were known as the Lords of the Burren. Well, that did it for me. I guess they knew what might make that American excited and get them to come on over and uh, fulfill their rev- reservations at the bed and breakfast. And, of course, it's a name of County Clare. And uh, Clare has always been the very center of O'Loughlin country. And you're going to find uh, Lachlan or Lachlane around the A.D. 953 is the man from whom the name is taken, according to all the oldest writings. And they, uh, originally, O'Loughlin and O'Connor were brothers, but they split off and uh, Lachlan formed the O'Loughlins and Connor formed the O'Connors of Clare, of course. And they split the clan and they formed each formed a clan of their own. So that's where the O'Loughlins and the O'Connors came from around the end of the 10th century. And Corcoran Row Abbey, of course, should be visited by anybody of the name, and that's an area that was inhabited by the O'Loughlins, and they ruled over the area uh, uh, that was known as the Burren, that, as I said before, was known as the Rocky Place. And O'Loughlin retained all of the Burren under his control until the coming of Cromwell, and that marked the end of, uh, well, really the end of everything for most people, and the occupiers remarked that that burn had not enough water, wood, or dirt to do away with a man. So that tells you what they thought of it and why they sent everybody to it. I'm trying to figure out that's where my people lived all along, and they enjoyed it. So uh, there's a story there, isn't there? Uh, hey, that's it for uh, the family name of the day. We can take a look at the Irish family coats of arms, and O'Loughlin is in the Irish Book of Arms, of course. It's actually got a figure of a man holding a bow and arrow, aiming that arrow, I think, and a uh, an anchor on the crest. Well, 
Coming up later in this episode, we're going to talk about where else the Eagles have returned to in the west of Ireland. And uh, let's take a quick look for O'Loughlin. There's plenty of references to O'Loughlin in the Master Name Index on our website that you can look to for free. Just take the O off the name and talk, type in Lachlan and uh, you'll see how many references come up. But they're in the Birth Index and in Irish genealogies from Keating's History and in our hardbound books on the families of Galway and Clare and in the Tribes and Customs of the High Many by O'Donovan. That's another book I reprinted. And, of course, they're in there numerous times in the Annals of Ireland by the Four Masters. And that included uh, O'Loughlin as a branch of the O'Neills, which was up north, and uh, O'Loughlin of Aileach, and O'Loughlin of Burren, of Clare, and of County Tyrone. And I'm waiting for DNA tests to tell me if... Uh, if some of those Tyrone O'Loughlins were really uh, the same as Claire O'Loughlins, or if uh, uh, they're more of a MacLachlan heritage, I'd like to figure that out. Old Nacy Cleary told me on my first trip that he thought the O'Loughlins came down from the north anciently, and uh, I'd like to learn the truth of that story, and without DNA, we could never do it. So I think I'm going to call up my friends at Family Tree DNA. Hey, now it's time for... Around the world in Irish ways. Well, here we've got some videos of the month and some web pages as well, I guess. you. Well, I think they're all videos, and they all take you to a web page. Uh, our first selection is Chinese songs sung by Irish schoolgirls. Uh, that's on YouTube. That's a good one. It's, it shows uh, how diverse and versatile the Irish are. They're paying back the Chinese for some favors they're doing. I'll talk about that. Uh, number two, the Kilfenora Cayley Band from County Clare celebrates 100 years of traditional Irish music, and they've been honored of late, and that was last year. They actually hit that 100-year mark. Number three, Kerry Eagle flies again in Ireland. There's not much sound on this, and it's not highly produced, but it shows that eagle flying around there, and I think that's over the Lake of Killarney, but I didn't stay tuned in long enough to find out. But you got some nice pictures of that eagle skimming over the water, and those eagles disappeared for so long. We're going to tell you where else they got brought back to. Now, we know they got brought back to Cary a couple of years ago, whether there's some eagles being brought back elsewhere, too. And number four, there's a uh, YouTube video. on all. The, I've got links to all these videos on my blog. Just click and go. But a video entitled My Hometown, Ennis County Clare. Uh, that's the video. And, hey, I remembered all those sites because I walked those streets in Ennis. It was... Uh, a refuge after spending all day walking and driving through the county, seeing the sights and talking to every single person I could find that had my last name. So I remember those streets and those colors and the statues, and uh, it was nice to see them again. And, of course, we've got video shorts of our own, uh, uh, what, about 15 of them up on the webpage if you have a hankering for videos, and more of those are to come. And that wraps that up. Uh, gosh, what's coming up next? Curious news and notes from Ireland today. Number one, continu continuing our Chinese uh, theme, uh, the Chinese New Year's was ushered in, and it's also the Year of the Tiger, with several hundred that gathered in uh, Wolf Tone Park in Dublin to celebrate the festivities that continued until the 21st of February. Uh, number two, Nuola Conway is the mother of the first set of sex tuplets in Ireland, and the odds were 4.5 million to one against that happen nat happening naturally, but it did, and there's a story on that in the Tribune. Uh, the first, there's links to all these stories on my blog. You just click and go. It'll take you there. But 4.5 million to one boy, they could also win the lottery with those odds. I think they're going to be trying to, too, because, uh, that's an expensive proposition. Number three, uh, Irish Eagles fly again. And this time they've restored them in County Donegal in the West. And that's the, uh, uh, a golden eagle up there. And it was the white tailed eagle down in County Kerry for all you folks who know about those things. And let me see, number four, the Irish cost of living in, uh, in, in living with the times, I guess you might say, has declined for 13 months in a row, which means it costs you less if you travel over there too, depending on what you're buying. Uh, but housing, clothing, and drink has decreased. So uh, that's some good news. It matches uh, 
the decreases in some salaries, I think. Number five, here's another Chinese-Irish story. Uh, real Chinese-Irish. Beijing's Foreign Stu Studies University is going to be teaching the Irish language. They've made an application to the EU, uh, and they've been doing that since 2007, I believe. And they've got over 30 colleges that have applied for funding of Irish language programs. And that includes uh, colleges in the U.S., Canada, Australia, and Europe. So I tell you, you ought to be listening to our uh, beginning Irish uh, uh, podcast because uh, that's real rudimentary. And that might tell you if you want to go further or give you a jump on the rest of the kids in the class when you start. Or, or on a jump on the rest of the old folks in the class when you start. But it seems like a little bit of everybody shows up, and uh, that's good for us all. Uh, number six, the Kilfenora Kaylee Band just celebrated its 100th anniversary, as I mentioned on the video uh, clip up there. And it's one of Ireland's best-known traditional Irish music bands. And they hail from County Clare. And the history can be traced all the way back to a fife and drum band that was back there in the 1870s. They say that gave them an inspiration. And uh, then the real band started up several years later. But Kilfenora descendants also began the first Irish family history podcast in 2006. Right here, of course, because I'm one of the sons of Kilfenora for sure. And uh, I couldn't pass up putting this on here, especially since uh, O'Loughlin was... Uh, the name of the day, and Kilfenora is the heart of O'Loughlin country. So that just about does it for today. You can uh, see our entire series at irishroots.com. Advertisers and sponsors welcome, of course. Uh, it's time to take it away. That's all for today, folks. Joseph, warm up those pipes. Remember, we have a broadcast series on Irish song and recitation, on local history of the Irish in America, and on 2,000 years of Irish history, as well as on the counties, and something special coming up on Irish language, I hope. Uh, we've got all that and more at our head school at irishroots.com. And you know, we've been known to appear, exhibit, teach, and even sing for your special events. Be sure to book in advance if it's important. And write me at my American address at Irish Roots Cafe, Box 7575, Kansas City, Missouri, 64116. Leave a message by phone at 816-256-3360. Reach me on my webpage at irishroots.com. Skype me at the Irish Roots Cafe. Uh, get me on MySpace, Facebook, Twitter, and Irish Central. Members foot the bill so they get first priority, but we're open to all. And by the way, a big thank you to all of our members. And away. <laughs>